Oh, yes. Fidelity bond, a bond to indemnify an employer or business for loss due uh, to embezzlement, yes, larceny, ouch, or gross negligence by an employee or other person holding a position of trust. Could you get me the fidelity bonds of every police department? Yes. Fidelity bonds of every bail bondsman? Ooh, the fidelity bonds of every school district of the United States? Ooh, and all of those that said, well, we're just going to have to let this fraud happen. Yes, we're going to have to let the felony happen. We're going to allow for forgeries and the doctoring of actual documents in every court of the United States. I'm going to want your fidelity bonds. Now, I think it is embezzling mm -hmm, to use forgery when you know it's a crime. Yes, I think it's embezzling when you continue to uh, employ judges. Yes, and um, I think there is some embezzling involved in all of this. <laughs> now, when you said here $10,000 uh, or $1,000 cash, yes, knowing, yes, knowing uh -huh, I wasn't in Squim, Washington, pooch, and then you allowed for forgery, yes, and then the RCWs require the appearance of the petitioner. Yes. There's this idea of acknowledging court orders. Yes. And then you send my documentation to Mike Van Proyen. When for the last two and a half years or two years, I said I wanted to speak to Marilyn Van Proyen. I will sue for the actual fidelity bond of every county of the United States. I will sue for the actual fidelity bond of every city of the United States that decided that they were going to participate in the misprison of felony and misprison of treason. Now, there is this idea that the individual employees of the cities, yes, yes, there is a gross negligence on the part of every city that has any oath of office in office city councils, <laughs> county, county commissioners, <laughs> each and every one of those in the sheriff's department said, so we're just going to cover this all up. Nobody's going to know about it. Now, get me your fidelity bonds and give me the fidelity bonds of each reservation. <laughs> give me the fidelity bonds of each school district. No, 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 a peace bond. You know, it took me a while to really study this out. A bond required by a corporate person breached or threatened to breach the peace. Also termed bond to keep the peace. See, breach of peace. Now, it has something to do with domestic violence. Yes, domestic abuse and violence. Breach of the peace. You know, I think this county and this state is causing a whole big bunch of ruckus. <laughs> A bond to keep the peace. Oh, you're breaching the peace of the United States of America because of your misprison of felony. <laughs> now, a bond required by a court from a person, yes, who has breached or threatened to breach the peace. Mm -hmm. Now, I had heard, yes, that there was the possibility in domestic violence laws that you, you could require of the petitioner to have to provide a bond, yes, guaranteeing that they would not commit domestic violence or child abuse <laughs> for every protection order that you've issued for the last 40 years. Yeah, I want to know if a bond was required of the respondent <laughs> for all the disillusions of marriage that you issued for the last 40 years. <laughs> I want to know if a bond was required of the respondent <laughs> because it seems that petitioners <laughs> do not have to have a bona fide reason for motioning the court. <laughs> it's as if they could have fraud involved. Yes. Malice, <laughs> negligence, <laughs> in, in fraudulent intent. <laughs> now, when you think about it, <laughs> who is it that has to provide these breach of peace bonds? Yes. Is it the individual that is alleged to committed domestic violence or child abuse? No, <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> is it the individual that allegedly committed domestic violence or child abuse while being married? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> now, quite often when reading the various laws about disillusions of marriage and domestic violence, <laughs> it seemed to me that the respondent was the individual that was always responsible for the court fees and costs. <laughs> so could you give me the court fees and costs associated with the actual issuance of protection orders <laughs> And the court fees and costs associated with the disillusion of marriage. <laughs> because as I understand it, yes, the individual that actually ends up paying, yes, is the respondent because the petitioner motioned the court first. <laughs> now, I know it. What am I going to do? I'm going to see every court of the United States that allows for a petitioner to motion the court without the good faith intention of doing what the requirements of the law are. 
Now, when you think about it, she did know that we had a United Nations marriage certificate. Yes, she did know that she made no attempt to serve me before having court hearings. In fact, she did know that I didn't get a dissolution of marriage after she issued it. And I think I could sue every court because it's a $400 billion day because the respondents, the individual that always gets stuck with all the court fees and companies. <laughs> 